Dhamai ka lo gai of Yahweh le liyan Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. This great dispensation of the church age where every believer has been indwelt by the Trinity demands breath by breath, moment by moment, sanctification to learn what is the truth. When Pontius Pilate in John 18.38 could ask what is the truth and Christ our Lord our God kept quiet by not answering him. The church age right now what we are going through in the completion canon of the scriptures given for us in the great period of enlightenment of the word of the Lord our God only through the filling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which is nothing but plural all. It is not gibberishly jumping along and dancing along or talking along in tongues wherewith you think your perfection has been needed in your humanity to talk in tongues. The groanings what Lord God the Holy Spirit could make on behalf of us, Romans 8 26 is not gibberishly jumping along and dancing along or talking along in tongues. So that on our behalf what it could complete for us, the intercessory prayers on behalf of us. So that we, every believer in Christ, could be perfect and complete. The failure to understand the plural or ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this church age, as the fish could be filled into the net. But here it is, the meaning to be under the controlling mentoring ministry. When we are under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it demands that we learn Bible doctrine with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, after the manner of the new man, so that we can put off the old man and put on the new man, which has been made after the e icon image of Lord God, which is nothing but endikaiosune kai hosietiste salatia. That's very, very important for us. And we walk by faith so that the world should know that we are the witnesses of the truth, as Isaiah chapter 43. From verse number 9 to verse number 13, or 9 through 13, very specifically teaches to us that we should be the way, the truth, and the life represented to lords on this earth. As the good news, Christ the Lord has been born and he has given for us this truth. So that through that Lord who has said the way, the truth, and the life, we could be now to those people. The oath or the ad, the Hebrew word to restore the evidence of his truth on this earth through our lives. For that cause we walk by faith. Walking in faith is what many people don't understand. It's nothing but to cling to him, to lean on him, to peripatao and sto icon, which is to march and to walk and to draw from his exhaustless springs of the world. The people on this earth who think they can have, apart from the consciousness to be renovated, they talk about something called as cognition. 
which is cognios kera in the Latin, which is equivalent to the Greek word called as nous. Bible teaches for us gnosis and then it calls for us to go to epinosis, what you believe in the word of the Lord of our God, thought accurately. And to witness the truth is our true life. But the world is thinking they can get something from this earth when they can meditate and become something like Swami or like Yogas. And in the experiences of their lives, they want to teach and they want to tell and they want to proclaim. What is it that you can learn about the 60 or 70 cognitions what Nithyanand, one of the Swami in my country, India, talks about? He says, working upon your mind is nothing, it is a waste of time. But these people truly never know. The news, the mind, which is nothing but the renovation of the standards of our thinking through Bible doctrine, Romans chapter 12 verses 1, 2, and 3, in comparison to that great honor calling in the Lord, the highest and the blessed, or the blessed life, what we have, the Zao life, not Bios life. We, the believers, are enjoying it by becoming the Yusabian believers in Christ by walking in faith, or in simple terms, to call you living by faith. The high calling, the true life, we live only by faith. Because we draw our souls from that exhaustless springs which has been given for us through the word of the Lord of our God. And we find all our resources in Him. And to have Him as a perfect covering for our eyes and a satisfying object for our hearts. To know Him as our only resource in every details of life, of difficulties or trials. It is an absolutely, completely and continually shut up into Him so that we are undividedly dependent upon Him apart from and above every creature confidence, above every human hope and every earthly expectation. And that is what we call the life of faith. And looking into it to understand it. It must be a reality and nothing at all. It will not do to talk about the life of faith. It is what we live by faith. So the exhaustless springs what we draw from the word of the Lord of our God is what the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is to expound to you this truth. That's what, dear brethren, we need to know in Isaiah chapter 43 particularly from verse number 8, when our iniquities have been cleansed. For what cause he has called us to be the name of joy, the name of praise, the name of honor. The same paraphrase words we can find in Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, to the praise of his glory and his grace. And here he says, before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you to be holy and blameless. But there he says, the desolate places will once again be filled with the shepherds and the flock. And that's what Jeremiah plays a very, very key role in the chapter number 33 for the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers whose duty is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God and inculcate into the minds of this 2.2 billion hearers or Christians. Because this Nithyanand Swami says, there are almost all 1 billion Hindus. There are almost all 10 million temples. Or one million temples and ten million people who have been enlightened and they, and they came to know about this cognition and they're living a life by not renovating the standards of the thinking they have attained something called as a consciousness and that consciousness can invigorate their life the bios life he talks that's what the earthly reasoning is all about They cannot understand what is the Zao life. They cannot understand what is the high calling in Christ because they are, cannot understand the spiritual discernment. Because Bible doctrine is a spiritual phenomena and you can know that until and unless it is the Lord of a God who shall nagad, reveal it to you, you can never know about it. 
And these things have been revealed to them who are Christians alone because they are born again, they are spiritually alive and the regeneration or the terms pertaining to the right word of the Lord our God to be born again, they need to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and then they can learn and seek and search and understand what the natural mind or the soulish mind or the two things to be called in the Greek, the Sarkikas and the Sukikas cannot understand what the pneumaticas can take. And that's what we have, the light in the word of the Lord of our God to teach. That's what we have to move from gnosis to epinosis, the right word of the Lord of our God being taught for us. But these people cannot even come to news. They are stuck up in cognitions, what they can call. And he mentions in his tape, ten to, in, in 10 minutes of his tape, 60 to 70 cognitions he has. And the people, the way they write the comments over there, they say they haven't heard about such things. They haven't heard about such commentaries. They haven't heard about such strategies. What he has thought is great. But what our Lord of God has appointed for us, do you know, dear brethren? We are the witnesses of our greater truth than what this Nithyanans for me can teach for you all. That's the Christianity, the only way, the truth and the life. No name given for you to be saved apart from the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't consider him as a guru. He is the Lord. The title for him, Christ the Lord, was given for us to walk by faith, to live by faith, to be constantly undivided and dependent upon my Christ and upon every word. That's what we read even in Psalms 27.6. Dear brethren, prior to continue our study, we shall confess our sins through rebound and get back to the word of the Lord of our God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we are going to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit and challenge challenges by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. Coming to Psalms 27 and verse number 6, it teaches to us very specifically why we need to fear the world? What is the need for us to worry about the world? Because there is nothing on this earth that could be greater for you than to think that that could be greater one for you to be renovated. So he says, since from verse number one, if Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, and He is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? He is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked one, such kind of men who come with the negative thoughts, even my enemies, even the enemies who rise up to eat up my flesh, even they will get stumbled and fell. That is what the kashal and the word nafal. And he says, not only the flesh, even the entire host which can encamp against me, so that my heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me in this I have my confidence. What is that he talks about? Verse number 1 and 2 and the following verses number 4 through 8. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That's what this unbelievers can never understand. What is the Naon temple of the Lord of our God we are and what it is, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will diligently seek and search in us that which is against the right word of the Lord of our God. Therefore he says, for in the time of trouble, it is Lord God the Father who shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up upon my enemies. And why above my enemies? The same thing he writes in Psalms 119 verses 96 and following. Because of this word we are superior than our enemies. Because of this word we are superior than our teachers. Because of this great infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God. What the world thinks that they are great in teaching such strategy about the cognition terms. What they can use. Because of the great hiding or inquiring in our na on man, the holy of the holy man, or the holy of the holy place, the Shekinah glory of the Lord of our God indwelling in us. Because of this, we are above our enemies who could be round about us. And that's why we always ask you to get every thought into captivity for Christ, even the minute thought. Not to rely upon the teachings of this world. 
but to purely depend upon the Yahweh, the only name given for us, says Psalm 147, verses 19 and 20, that he did not reveal to the world, he revealed to us the same thing he prayed for us in John chapter 17. And when Lord God, the Holy Spirit will come, he will ask you to move into everlasting truth. Provided you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Provided you are using constantly rebound, that is confession of your sins. And the world may talk the terms in other words. My cognition instead of knows, which is nothing but mind which is nothing but again Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3 renovation of the standards of your thinking to rebound the world may talk in the terms to blind you out to lead you to lies if there are 1 billion who are following such teachings who will be calling themselves as 1 million enlightened souls then how much every believer ought to be if there are 2.2 billion Christians on the entire earth if one billion doesn't even qualify to the half of what a point they are in 2.2 billion Christians in the entire world. It is not a religion that we are promoting. Christianity is a relationship with the great Lord God the Father through His Son. Because Christ our Lord our God alone said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He alone said, wherewith it is His name given for us on this mankind on this earth to believe and to be saved. Because there is no other name for them to be saved to reach eternal life. Lord God graciously grants to those who believe in my Christ this great eternal life. You don't work for it, you don't earn it, neither we deserve it. It is the grace gift of the Lord our God. Do you know what does man deserve eternal death? For the wages of sin is man, for the wages of sin is death for man. But the gift of Lord our God through Christ Jesus our Lord our God is eternal life. That's what we receive by grace. Grace you don't earn, you don't deserve, you don't work for it. It has been given graciously for us. It is the unmerited favor bestowed upon the sinful mankind. That's why, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Not of your works, lest any man should boast. The world is seeking and searching salvation because of their works. The world is seeking and searching for their enlightenment gods. The world is having multiple number of gods, particularly the Hinduism. But we have only one true Lord of a God, as he says in Isaiah 43, 11. Therefore, he says, now shall my head be lifted up. The word Roshi, which is nothing but the head. How it could be lifted up? Room, the Hebrew word, to be high. There could be no other name apart from the name of my Christ. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Christ, my Lord, my rock. Therefore, his mind has been given for us, which is nothing but his thinking. And when we have his thinking, there is nothing that could be higher than that. That's what he writes the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. When our obedience is ready and we have been prepared, we can pull down every imagination that goes against the word of the Lord of our God, getting every thought into captivity for my Christ. That's what we are high. No matter however they may research, no matter however they may consider the body to be in these terms, the body to be in the lifting of the veil, the body to be the signs of the soul. How much vague Satan works out in the strategy rather than believing simply by faith of what we read. Because we live by faith. Though you may think you are real and present in front of us, the word of the Lord of our God is much more real. That's what we live by faith. We walk by faith. We lean upon faith. Faith is nothing but pistos. Pistos is nothing but again doctrine. The present problem in our present Christendom is the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers whose right bona fide duty is to train you up to become every day the disciples of the word of the Lord of our God and to carry his cross. Doesn't you know the cost of discipleship? Until unless you forsake everything and follow him, you cannot be his disciples as even Luke chapter 14. And yet you want to be there into the world and think weekly once is enough, then why not such kind of morons will rise their heads? Rather than you should rise up your head above. You may think it's a proud boasting. I don't care for it. Because Jeremiah chapter 9 says, If ever you boast, boast in the knowledge that you know about him, that you have learned his righteousness, that you have learned his loving kindness, that you have learned his justice. The greater the name of the Lord our God, which has not been honored in our midst. Can't you know what the word says in Isaiah 43, 12? We shall come back to that, but prior to that, let me come and look upon what is the word room to set high. 
And he says, Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. Who are the enemy, whether they may be personal or invisible enemies, or whether they may be national ones being put together. Dear brethren, enemy is nothing but adversary, Satan. You are your own worst enemy because of your ignorance and arrogance not to put your flesh crucified in Christ. And come back and learn every day the right and infallible word of the Lord of our God. You are your own worst enemy. And you never know about that. Because you never learn about that. You think you can modify this flesh by Christian moral degeneracy and Christian immoral degeneracy. Colossians chapter 2 verses 21 through 22. But remember... The paralegid, zomai, and fitan logia, the miscalculation of your spiritual life by vain teachings, the vain philosophy of this world. Asking you to pay tithes, asking you to come and do sacrifices, asking you to come weekly residence or weekly attendance to the church. But not making you every day the right disciple of the word of the Lord our God, which has to be, says, in fact, indeed, Luke 14, 23, carry up your cross every day and follow my Christ. The made in my care for the church, 2 Corinthians 11, 28, what Apostle Paul quotes. I'm not worried about the trials and temptations what my even hypocritical brethren have done to me. I'm worried about only one thing, what it is, he says about the made in my care for the church. What they're teaching every day in the pulpits, what they're teaching every day in the church. Are they communicating this great mystery doctrine? Doesn't he write for us in Colossians chapter 4, the pain of his heart, though he is being in chains, he's asking for a prayer request so that he could come out and teach this great mystery doctrine and why he has to teach it. He says, because it is binding, unavoidable, it is urgent, it is compulsory, it is necessary for us to teach. Because that is the O out of intrinsic necessity to be paid to the church. Therefore we read in Colossians 4.4, I should be making manifest to make visible. Because it is the great moral personal obligation for me laid down upon my Christ by my Christ upon me well so pastors today in our pulpits the failure of the right work of the pastor teachers what we have been reading from Ezekiel 44 23 in comparison to Ezekiel chapter 22 verses 25 and 26 to use the word conspiracy of the prophets the people who violate the right word of the Lord of a God. Becoming of a jackass of an evangelist, moving from place to place and not even able to make up to give those who have been born in Christ or born again in Christ to the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher who could in return train them up to be high above the enemies of this worldly thinking. And if one billion of the people are into the trap of such lives, the essence of their entire life it courts. An eternal swami in his state. If there are one billion people over there, then they are not even equivalent to the 2.2 billion Christians in this entire world. Do you not think even for them, Christ my Lord, my rock, my God, sacrificed on the cross to save them. And we are being called to be the light and soul principle whenever we open up our mouth in the knowledge of the Lord our God to spread his essence, says Philippians 2, wherever we go triumphantly to teach. By holding for the light of the word of the Lord of God in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations. Since they have been blinded by Satan not to know the truth. Do you not think it's our privilege? Do you not think we are the witnesses? Do you not think we should be the men that our Lord of God prayed for us in John chapter 17 to teach? Even for them that those who believe upon their words, even for them I prayed, O Lord. And that's what he uses the word Father. Because he is the sent one from the Lord. He calls for us that he prayed. Even when we go and speak or talk about the terms pertaining to gospel to others. Even for them it is the grace of the Lord of God. He died on the cross so that he says the world, world, sin. Tetelestai, fittest. For God so loved the world, the world. Caspas diabolicus, though it is out of its order. 
that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have a right everlasting life a true everlasting life what the world is suck what the world is searching and seeking on that by their works by their deeds and being blinded by looking upon the right word of the lord of god we christians have been becoming the prey for such kind of a work on this earth where satan also tells let him be happy in christian moral degeneracy let him be happy in christian immoral degeneracy let him come and pay the tithes if ever he is having his area of weakness let him come and give me some good deeds or the deeds which he calls for them by paying some charities or this or that you are not here to reason your moral thoughts morality is what the world is we are called for virtue 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 in christ which is far above than morality do you not know when the right man teaches the right word when proverbs writes for us he shall turn away from him from the multitude of sins and you can save his soul even in james 5 turning away from the sin what it is john 16:8 they did not believe in my christ if you are not able to open up your mouth your deeds will speak louder the undefendable one where the world will shut its mouth doesn't you know about my country india where mother teresa was been used though she was been serving among the lepers the service of her caused many people to shut their mouth what their own community could not do therefore dear brethren we need to constantly look that the things pertaining to the right word of the lord of a god which we have to be the true chosen servant of the lord of a god on this earth because every believer by default he is an ambassador to the lord and by default he is the great minister to the lord of a god we are here to prove the great work of the lord of a god by such undefending queries where the world shall not open up their mouth and that's what we have to be our doctrine our way of life our thinking not just legal standards we know very well so many christians who haven't been enlightened in the word of the lord of a god have caused a great damage to the name called as christianity including the great leaders for my country india however the british might have come they might have stabilized between hindus and muslims not to get into fight but if they have shown the true love to my lord they would have certainly made rather than leaving this country to sink itself a great nation a great nation where they couldn't understand what is there for them a great nation where they went along in seeking the colonies the powers a man on this earth is in its way reasonings to the great not knowing where to go how to go what to go but yet our lord of god has given for this mankind to know what is the truth by giving his bible which is his guidelines doesn't he say love your enemy as you love thyself though you may win the entire world and lose that precious soul what is the profit for you naked you have come naked you go but you cover that man's sin that is what making him to believe in my christ and establishing the truth in their life you would change many people from their sins and you would save that soul what does christianity talk about it doesn't talk about the sacrifices of a human one what the other religions talk which is origin from satan jeremiah 7 that he says giving a human sacrifice doesn't even come to my mind it was a test being put for abraham whether he truly loves my lord whether he truly depends upon my lord whether he walks by faith or not and therefore he was been called as friend today by default every believer has been called in friend not asking them to put to test but rather believing the revealed revolution what we have been given in our hands and what is that 
You are my witnesses, says the word. You are my witnesses doesn't refer only to the pastor teacher in the pulpits. It doesn't refer to the evangelist who goes round about. It refers to every individual believer in Christ who has been given this great work. The great work of witnessing and representing my Christ because we have been represented before God the Father through Christ. We are representing Christ our Lord our God on this earth because he trusted us and gave us his mind. And he calls us his friends. And the friends of the Lord our God are they who keep his word forever. That's what he did in the life of Abraham. The Kerusothon Lagan preach the word, make disciples. The simple reason what we can find in Jeremiah chapter 33. Because we have to be always above our head. Because he says in Psalms 27 6, Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies which are round about me. Therefore will I offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy which is nothing but teruwa, T-E-R-U-A-H, the transliteration. And the phonetic goes T-E-R-O-O-A-W, which is nothing but sound of tempest, shout of joy, shout of joy because we have overcome the last enemy even, the death, which is nothing but the jubilee, the rejoicing, as Nehemiah 8 10 writes for us, the joy of the Lord of our God is the strength of us. So it is the joy we shall give every day, the sacrifices in the tabernacles. And he says, I will sing She'er, which is nothing but making melody in your heart. Colossians 3 16, when richly the word of the Lord of our God has been dwelt in you. And he says, Yes, I will sing praises more specifically which is nothing but zamar, which is nothing but to halal, to shine, and to make the right word of the Lord of God to be causing, to be celebrated. And for whom does he does all these things? In for the Lord. Because he has made to make every breath of his life to trample Satan under his feet. And satanic thoughts includes everyone who haven't believed in my Christ and love to reason by the way of the practical examination of the thinking, by the way of thinking that they have attained the sixth sense or the seventh sense of the chakras being exposed. By the way what they have thought that self-sacrifice has been needed in this life. Or no matter whatever they think that they have attained. The enlightenment thought. Do you know what the believer calls in Christ? In Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, we have been prayed for marching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in order to go for apocalyptic epinosis knowledge. For the revolution of the epinosis, complete knowledge of the right word of the Lord of our God. That's a very great thing for us. We have been called for something great, which the world is seeking and searching, and never they will find if they don't believe in my Christ. Because Bible doctrine is a spiritual phenomena and Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our mentor, who is our paraclete guide. And that too, if you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the confession of our sins through rebound, then only you can understand what is the real life, the true life. And apart from that, it is a vague uncertainty it is what you talk about. You don't have any proof. We have the proof in the Bible which says heaven and the earth will vanish off. But his word abides forever and forever. And in that word he has chosen us to be his witnesses. And the work of the pastor teacher we shall look after considering first these witnesses in Isaiah in chapter number 43. What a great chapter it is describing all the time for which cause he has made us to be alive says even 43 7 to whom I have made to whom I have called to whom I have created for my glory and he says the blink for the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears who are these people professing wise becoming fools Believing not what is the truth word or the true word in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. The problem with us is the pastors are not expounding that to the believers. They are making the believers to come weekly once to the church. These are the pastors who don't have the burden of Christ. 
They just run the churches for the thumbs pertaining to some pieces of bread or some handful of barley and they love to come and do the gimmicks of miracles and healings with their oil businesses. But now they will come to teach the right word, the right word, the right word, which is through proper isagogics, categories and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. And they haven't understood that we are by faith alone in Christ alone. We have been sealed until the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit of God being baptized into that royal family of God. And yet they say there is a time for you to speak in tongues so that your, your, your relationship with the Lord could be get perfected, says Zach Thurman in one of his tapes. Why Christ was not needed that to talk in tongues? Because he says he was already perfect. If you talk like that and before these unbelieving men, though you are Zak Punan, they will take you till to your shame, though so that your nose could be rubbed to the wall. Do you know why? Do you know the gift of tongues? Fulfilling for the northern prophets of Judah when they failed to come and witness the Lord and when Isaiah came to teach them in Isaiah chapter 29. The first prophecy of the tongues and the 40 years of evangelism from AD 30 to AD 70. The gift of evangelism was nothing but the tongues in their own languages they could hear and understand. It is not the gibberishly jumping along and dancing along or talking along in the way you can think the things pertaining to Lord God the Holy Spirit mentioned in Romans 8 26 which is nothing but for our infirmities the groanings which we cannot understand that's what I know you will quote that passage. That is the intercession for you to become strong and firm in the word of the Lord of God on behalf of you being prayed by Lord God the Holy Spirit. That's not speaking in tongues. The groanings which you cannot utter. And those 40 years of evangelism has led the people not to believe in Christ yet though he has made the cheapest gift of all time. And in AD 70, the destruction of the temple, the diaspora of the Israelites, the fifth cycle of discipline entering over there, a sudden halt for them. Till they could come back and be put back only by the Lord of God as the way Humpty Dumpty being spilled all over the world. No one can put them back apart from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his millennium. And dear brother, in the tribulation time, what you go through for the seven years, the greatest evangelism of the gospel through the one like 44,000 Jews, including in the tribulation, the everlasting gospel being preached by the angels. You have a lot many things over there to do. The same thing as a replica being taught by those men in 40 years of evangelism. And that's not the work speaking in tongues demands that you should be in such and such terms. Which is continuing till today? No, not at all. After the completion of the canon scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, we read, When the perfect word is come, the imperfect things will be moved off, the temporal spiritual gifts, including prophets and apostles, the miracles and healings. I wish our Lord our God would have kept the discernment of the spirits. The discernment of the spirits. And that could be if a man is coming to a church to talk. That time before the completion of the canon of the scriptures, they couldn't know what is right and what is wrong. So the man who had that bona fide gift, after his sermon, he would stand up and say, if it is true, accept it. He would say, it is true, accept it. If it was false, he would say, reject it, discard it. It doesn't belong to the word. That's what, that was the discernment of the spirits. Numata diacrinas. I wish that spirit would be there. The gift would be there for us still in our Christendom. But do you know what our Lord of God has done? Fulfilling Hebrews 5.14 when you grow up from milk to bread. The sincere milk of the word of the Lord of God. 1 Peter 2.2 and then the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of God. Matthew 4.4. When you grow and to reach that standards, he says in Hebrews 5.14. With your practical spiritual enlightenment of your senses. You would discern what is right and what is wrong. That's the reason he put it off in the temporary spiritual gifts, the discernment of the spirits. Coming to miracles and healings, the greatest miracles and healings will be the confession of your sins. That's why he says, greater life I will give, I will cure them in Jeremiah 33, 6. What it is by sending his word, Rafa. He shall cure us by the great word and by the great work of the pastor teacher he mentions there. 
The problem with us is you take the literal translations and you don't go back to the original language of the scriptures and dig them and go back and scrutinize them and understand what does it meant to say really. And for that, you need to have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. Then simply don't stand in your pulpits to preach the word thinking that you have the bona fide gift. The great healing through his word. And that's what we can look, the miracles and the healings. Do you know what a great miracle it is for you today? Seeking and searching to find the right pastor, teacher, bona fide, gifted one, that will be the greatest miracle in your life. Do you know what a greatest miracle apart from that is? The completed kind of scripture, the 66 books confined in one Bible. The Old Testament and the New Testament being put together. Though it has taken a journey from 1440 BC till to AD 96, not AD 70. That's what you find all the problem to understand about the gift of tongues. The great wide period of epistles, what Apostle John has written on the island of Patmos. It was not written in AD 70, it is AD 96. The completion of the canon of scripture in AD 96. The fellowship epistle, what he writes, that we have the sperm of Christ in 1 John 3, 9. Showing forth a pattern for us not to walk like Paul or James or John, but to walk like Christ. 1 John 2, 5. Teaching to us the importance when the right word of the Lord of God has been taught, how happy it would be for him. In 2nd epistle of John and 3rd epistle of John. Besides writing for us the revolution, the historical trends mentioned in Revelation 2 and 3 and teaching for us how Satan's synagogue, Satan's copulation point and Satan's throne has been established. You have to be more alert to teach the word of the Lord of God accurately and he goes to prove there again in a millennium those who have been beheaded for the word of the Lord of God for the teaching. He writes there from Revelation 4 through 19 the seven years of tribulation with the lesser and, with the lesser and the greater tribulation periods. And then talking about the millennium. He calls for us the new heaven and the new earth, which has been there in righteousness. Even the same thing he writes in 2 Peter 3, 15 through 19, or 15 through 18. And there we find again a word, those who are unlearned. Again, who are our matates, negative to matates. Who are not the disciples of the word of the Lord of God and who are not persisting enough. That is what the things who are not able to perceive or be content. That's what Apostle Paul says, in whatever state I am, I am content. But here the believers are not content except Sunday. Believers are not content except on yearly festivals. That's why they don't learn the doctrine. That's why they become a prey for such idiotic teachings being taught by Nithyanand Swami or any other moron who could rise. That should be anyone. Apart from my word of the Lord of God being taught by the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher, anyone who could teach wrongly, Concerning the life of the word of the Lord of our God, concerning our life in Christ, concerning our true use of your spiritual life on this earth. We count them as morons, infidels, entertaining clowns. And he writes again for us in the book of Revolution to teach. Those who want to be, let them be holy. Those who want to be still unholy, let them be unholy. Those who want to practice unjust means, let them still practice unjust means. I have in my hands the rewards to give according to their works. Every breath what you take, if it is not in the grace of the Lord of our God, dear brethren, what is your life that you are living on this earth? For what it is worth you of? When you stand in the presence of the Lord of our God and make the flock to be still babes who haven't grown up in grace to become perfect and complete, fulfilling Colossians 1, 24-29, at least some part of the role of the suffering of my Christ for that body to be paid. Not the vicarious sufferings, but the mental agony sufferings that the people are still immature, not grown up to learn the entire counsel of the Lord of our God. To declare to them, that's what he says in Isaiah 43-12, to declare, I have declared to them, I have told them, I have nagad, that I am the only Lord of a God and besides me there is none. And he writes for us to understand the Gospel of John from the time of AD 96 to teach those who believe in my Christ and have the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit, through their bellies will flow the stream of living waters. That's not the way what Nithyanand says about his consciousness. 
if he has his consciousness, the people will live a true life. We have in us the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God controlling and reigning in us, ruling in us. The only thing is we need to be far from the sin either by thought, word or deed. The greater you grieve and squelch and deceive and wax, the indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the greater your life. You're fighting against the great force, the only force, the unique force. The old Dhamma Dakha being used in 1 Kings chapter 19. The voice of a still voice or a small voice. But the greatest force of all time. You will be fine fighting against that Holy Spirit of the Lord of a God in your entire life. And the first warning discipline. Then the intensified stage of discipline taking you to the point of death and releasing you so that you can believe in my Christ. And get back to know what is the truth in the Lord, to have greater grace, humble grace. And yet you don't believe then, sin unto death. Is there anyone among your teachings who could say, if the one billion followers, or if there are things pertaining to ten million enlightened souls, can anyone say that they have come back to life? Then why is the reasoning? Is anyone in the Mahmudinian side who could say, I am the way, the truth and the life apart from my Christ, though they are prophets? Then why is the sheer arts of reasoning for us? Simply believe your moron minds, the minds of mud can never understand what is the love of Christ. By grace we have been bestowed upon us. For your foolish minds, the only salvation is my Christ. If you don't know about my Christ, learn about my Christ by knowing the gospel of my Christ, being taught graciously in the entire world. Though they haven't been accurate, at least believe, pistos. Why we ask you to believe? As you eat and drink, which is very simple to take in, which is a non-meritorious thing, for a believer and believer it is the same. Likewise, by faith you believe in the Lord. As you eat and drink, so you believe the gospel of my Christ and be saved. Don't go to reason over there. Don't go to reason to say, was he being incarnated? Was he being crucified? Was he being resurrected? Was he being ascended? Was he being seen in the heaven? Was he being testified or not? <laughs> To say that he was not been resurrected, the soldiers were been given money, says Matthew 27. To say the three natural incidents, that is what breaking of the rocks, tearing of the whale, and the dead resuscitation from the tombs is enough. That he was been resurrected from the dead. Is it not enough for your minds to realize that? If you think your Gurujis or Swamijis have risen up from the dead, show the proof. When you don't have the proof, then what is the reason to talk about? My Christ, my Lord, my Rock, show the proof. You may think it has been written by man, not at all. It is God breathed. It is Theonastas. God breathed. No man can write these things. If you can go back and look from 1440 BC, the mentioning over the first time of my Christ in Genesis 3 5, taken care back in Deuteronomy 18. Again, when you find those things very specifically fulfilled through the various prophets, Isaiah chapter 7, the virgin shall give a birth. What all you want to go back and look? They are not following the trend of those what they have been taught. They have been inspired by the Holy Spirit of Lord of our God so that they have been exiled out the truth for us. And to exalt that truth, what we are having, the completed can of scripture, demands the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, with the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, who trains us faithfully, the contentment period. Not in a weekly once you come and you think you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, going for some assembly and getting graduation over there and you can come and teach. Not at all. It takes preparation, faithful preparation, if needed, kneeling down in his presence and learning the word of the Lord of God. And that's the key. That's the only proskunia worship and that's the only divine service what we can pay to the Lord of God in this flesh. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Why can't we prepare kneeling down in his presence? 
to offer our divine sacrifice to the Lord of our God, to offer our divine service to the Lord of our God. What the neology can teach was been said to H. A. Ironside by his French minister or preacher. When he asked, from where did you get these notes? I want some of them. H. A. Ironside was been answered by this Irish preacher, not French, Irish preacher. Few weeks from now you kneel down. I learned this from the field where I go. Knelt in the presence of the Lord our God, opened the open Bible. The one who has written the Bible has taught me about this mysteries. And no education under this sun can qualify you to teach them. Have a few weeks of practice kneeling down in his presence, and even you will also teach. That's the right proskune. That's the right divine service to the Lord our God. Where it has been failed today in our pulpits by the so-called pastor teachers. Having to enjoy their life in the details of this consideration. Where they think it is much more needed for the belly to serve. Rather than serving to the glory of the Lord of God. Why do they become pastors? Some pastors have come for the tithes. Some pastors have come for the name. Some pastors are running for their life. But they haven't been truly given this bona fide gift. If they have been given truly the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, they would come to serve and not to be served. No matter whatever it is, you may think, dear brethren, the things pertaining to the right word of the Lord of our God, which has been delineated very specifically for us in the church age, demands to inculcate the truth. So they failed. They failed to teach the truth. They failed to expose the truth. They failed to teach becoming Lord God's ideal shepherds. When they failed to do it, the congregation is failing to carry this cross, carry this burden, and to become whenever open their mouth with seasoned salt, whenever they could talk with the divine oracles of the word of the Lord of our God, whenever they could say, yes, my head is lifted above than my enemies. Psalms 27, 6. They have become a failures in those terms. Therefore, he says, bring forth the blind people that have eyes or the deaf that have ears. We know very well the way Satan blinds their eyes. Never they will listen to the proof of Christ. What has been resurrected, what has been coming back to life. Even he was there for 40 days on this earth in the resurrection body. And therefore, he says in John 18, 37, I have been born to witness the truth. And when Pontius Pilate asks, what is the truth? It is we, what the church need to answer. What is the truth to the entire world? Not talking in the terms pertaining to a group of luck. That's why we go global through the YouTube and the grace of the Lord of our God to put our videos in the YouTube. Whether they may be here or so phobias, we don't mind. If Apostle Paul would have been, he would have done the same work because he went for the first missionary journey, second missionary journey, third missionary journey to reach the unreached. But the grace of the Lord of our God, in the way the technology being improved, we are going through to the entire world through YouTube. We are happy for that. Though we may not have so much of money to travel and the time because our regular schedule is to study day by day the right word of the Lord of our God and teach accurately the word of the Lord of our God. Because Lord God's ideal shepherd will do always the didactic ministry. The teaching ministry. He will inculcate rightly the word of the Lord of our God daily. Standing still in one place. Giving you the exposition of the rich word of the Lord of our God from the original languages of the scriptures. That's what the people are failing today in our pulpits. Since they fail to give the rich, rich exposition of the word of the Lord of God in our pulpits, the morons in the other religions rise to talk and rise their words upon my Christ. And if we count them as our perfect enemies, when they are spreading such lies, including the pastors who don't have the bona fide gift, we hate them with perfect hatred as David says in 1 Samuel chapter 22. Because the way they dishonor my Lord's word, we are not the one to keep quiet. If David could say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 
when we have the completed canon of scripture, we could be greater our voice than to say, like David, who said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine, who would say, who are these morons who are talking about my Christ without knowing the knowledge of my Christ, standing in the pulpits to expound their mouth. Let them come and kneel down and read the Bible, write the Bible in the original language of the scriptures, dig every word, scrutinize it, and then let them come and teach, if ever they have that burden to teach. If not, better shut them out because they have a greater judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. In the present time, they may think they are doing great things. But remember your labor, which will be burnt off, which is wood and stubble. Not only you will lose your rewards on this earth, even in the heaven to come. Be careful about that. The one who dishonors his word, the word of the Lord of God says, The dearest one whom he has made to be the gift for us, the gift of a woman to be given for us, to enjoy that grace, that woman will be sent to other men. And do you not know what is that love jealousy? you can find the same jealousy lessons what we learn on Israel the way how the both sisters Aloha and Ahiloba went along traversing under every green tree like a donkey spreading forth her legs if that could be the fate how much more it could be for us you are not like Hosea to take back your wife if you are a bona fide gifted pastor teacher, rightly divide the word of the Lord of God, and they will find in one of the Psalms he says, Your wife will be like such and such, your children will be like such and such. And when we are for Christ, when we rightly honor the word of the Lord of God, at least looking upon your lives, be careful what is happening in this earth while you're pilgrimaging on this earth. You honor the Lord's word, Lord will honor you back. If you think it's a wild thing to honor my Lord, by singing and dancing it's enough, not at all. By praying it's enough, not at all. It demands to renovate the standards of your thinking, what this Nithyanan Swami says, cognitions, cognitions, cognitions. And he has 60 to 70 cognitions where he can tell the essence of the entire Hindu theology. <laughs> and forgetting what is mine, Forgetting what is the renovation of the standards of thinking in Christ. And dear brethren, if you believers don't wake up, remember you have a great harvest of one billion people who are believing lies and are ending their up in lies. And Jude 23 says, as many as we can pull them out from the fire. It's our duty now, because Christ, our Lord of God, said, we are his witnesses. Dear brethren, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. And let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. That's what he says. Get your great challenging men. Who among them can declare this? That's what he says. Nagad this, until unless we Christians can nagad in the church age. In the past it was for the work of the Israelites. And show us the former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses. Their evidence. <laughs> that they may be justified. Sadak, righteous ones. Or let them hear and say what is the truth what we are teaching. Let them hear Shamma. And then say how they can hear until as you open up your mouth and teach. Looking up on the time, you should be the communicators of the word of the Lord of a God. Able to eat strong meat. And if you open up your mouth, what do we find? Reasonings like a babe. Like the Zak Poon and the way how he reasons about the tongues. About the pastor teacher bona fide gift. If you reason like that, will they be justified? Not at all. They will not be justified. Then what is your failure? The failure is that you haven't taught, you haven't been learned as the truth is in Christ. From the original language of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. You haven't understood the importance of every word in the proper syntaxis or diphthongs. And how much study has been needed for us, 2 Timothy 2.15, to fulfill that work. 
And why will not non-believers believe in their lies, being taught, thinking that they are justified because they love to look at least the deeds, <laughs> which is undefendable agreement or argument. If you show forth your good deeds before the foundation of the world, says Ephesians 2.10, the unbelievers also will not have that argument to fight with you because your deeds are holier and lovely. But the sad part is, the Christian is going to go to heaven by believing in Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. In comparison to his moral life, he is much more inferior than to the unbeliever who is always superior in his works, in his morality. That's the problem with us. That's the evidence what even the pastors leave behind. Go back and look and see the lives of those pastors. We talk good things in the fitanlogy of the paralagizomai, miscalculation of the spiritual life. And that in their deeds, they love to show forth cupidity all the time. And how will the unbelievers believe? It has become the word of the Lord of our God, though much more honoring on this earth by giving in word to 150 languages using that word, quoting some scriptures, going and saying, we will pray for you because we are righteous, not even knowing the principle of rebound, not even able to realize what is the work of the pastor teacher, not even able to realize that you should be the communicators of the word of the Lord of our God so that we can go and declare to them. At quoting some scriptures and saying, Dear brethren, till now what the Christendom has done in civil apostasy, renovate those standards once again to put back the proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical exposition of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. No flesh and blood can teach to you. Kneel down in the presence of the Lord of a God what the Spirit can teach to you if you have that zeal and thirst like David to honor Lord's word above his name and to do after Lord God's own will. That is what a man after Lord God's own heart. It is he who shall provide you the greatest resource of all time. The exhaustless springs of his word. And if you fail to perform it, it is purely your negligence. It is purely your ignorance and arrogance. So he says, let them bring forth their witnesses. And he says, you are my witnesses. Because when they get their witnesses, they shall be justified by this great infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God. When we open up our mouth in the original language of the scriptures to teach them every word. So that they hear and say what is truth. Because they cannot justify. When we tell them, when we get them to their mind what is truth, they will understand. And how they can hear until you have been prepared. Still you need someone to teach. Still you need someone to lay down the basic foundations. The basic fundamentals of Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Still you need someone to provide you milk and not strong meat. That's why you go for the details of life to be miracle, to be healed, and ask them to pray for your circumstances of the details of life and not able to look upon what is the right word, right privilege, right calling in Christ. Time is very short for us. Every word of the Lord of our God is so powerful, dear brethren. That's why the word says in Hebrews 4, 12, alive and powerful. Time is insufficient for us to expound that. I'm not able to cover up which I need to cover, Jeremiah 33, 12, because I have still teach to you Isaiah chapter 43. Every word of the Lord of our God is so great. Maybe that's the reason Apostle Paul took five to eight hours in a day. Though he had not the completed canon, but now we have the completed canon of scripture, the 66 books. And have you thought from Genesis 1 1 till to Revelation 22 21 any time in your life? Though you are an old man as a pastor, can you say that in your consciousness? Have you at least read once, kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of our God? Have you, asked, have you at least written once, kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of our God, by slaving the bear and slaving the lion? And going to slave the Goliath? Doesn't he say in Hosea 4, 6, they have rejected my knowledge, therefore rejected them to be my priests. 
And what do the false prophets, priests and have all the time in the Old Testament? Nothing but vanity, vanity, vanity. What he intends to us to have? The shepherds of the Lord God's own heart, Jeremiah 3.15, who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. The shepherds who shall be here to teach to you the entire counsel of the Lord of our God so that they could be pure from the blood which could be upon your own head. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. The shepherds who shall nagat to you the gala exposition of the word and get back to your captivity of captive by taking the U-turn into the great reality of the word of truth. Lamentations 2.10 the shepherds, when the people will approach to him, they shall have in their lips the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where the people will come to learn that knowledge. The shepherds were spoiling this great vineyard of the Lord. And yet our Lord of our God says, rebound and come back. The place among all the inhabitants of the earth to the uttermost parts of the earth making them disciples and sending them to become to spread the gospel of my Christ in every cities he mentions in Jeremiah 33 12 the shepherds who go there to Mavna which is to count the principle of software mentioned in Psalms 22 verses 21 to 26 or 21 to 31 he shall recount them he shall make them softwares we shall make them scribes in the great congregation of the Lord of God, the vast force of the Lord of God to be paid through this great fearing ones, Yahweh 3373. The super grace believe was in Christ. The vast force of the Lord of God to be paid. And that vast force is what? To preach every breath you go, the gospel of my Christ. Therefore he says, let them hear and say that this is the truth. In verse number 10, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that they may know and believe me and understand. This is what the prayer, what he prayed for us in John chapter 17. That they may believe, first he says to know, Yada, and then he says believe, Aman, and then he says understand, Bina. The time he, before me there was no God form, neither shall there be any after me. And that's a great thing, or nothing formed of God. And he says in verse number 11, I even I am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior Yasha which is to be saved. And then in verse number 12, I have declared number one, Nagat. Until unless they could be taught by the prophets and apostles, we couldn't come to know this doctrine. And have saved again the word Yasha because he is the Savior. He has declared, he has saved. That's the great miracle what we can have. The 66 books compiled into one Bible and we have it that in print after 3000 years. A 1611 KJV translation, the first Bible, what you can find in English. Earlier to that, we have the manuscripts being taken care, translated by the great works of those great men, Tertullius or some of the great men who have done their great work in their life for whom we should be much thankful to the Lord. It is the Lord of a God who has declared, it is the Lord of a God who has saved. It is the Lord of a God who says, there is no Savior apart from me, the word for Yasha. And I have showed you, that is what Shamma, so that you can hear and listen and obey. You could be heard, you could be regarded. That's the Rimata declaration of the bona fide work of the pastor teacher. And then he says, you can pay attention when you really obey the right word of the Lord of God. That's what he says, you are my witnesses and I have shaved. So when there was no strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, said the Lord that I am God. By that he meant to say what? The doctrine, what I am teaching to you, is the unique one. The people have copied this doctrine, the duplication of the word, and Satan has led your minds to believe lies, to expose your science of soul, to expose your thinking, to find your cognitions. Before there could be any strange God among you, I have declared, I have shown, and I have saved it for your future reference. That's what it meant to say. Therefore, we have the mind of Christ. When there was no strange God, the Zohar, to be a stranger, 
who is contrary to the word of the Lord of our God and he calls a stranger as a prostitute who is loathsome to breathe, who is a foreigner, an enemy. Therefore, he says in Ephesians 4, 17 to 20, do not walk like these unbelievers walk. This is what I witness in the Lord and ask you because they walk in the vanity of their minds. They are aliens being alienated from the life and the plan of the Lord of our God. Therefore, he says, this is what I witness, this is what I ask you in the Lord. You are not so, but learn Christ, learn Christ. Because of their arrogance and callousness of their hearts, they haven't known what is Christ. You shall not be the same. Because before the foundation of the world, or before the strange gods could exist in our terms over here in Isaiah 43, 12. He says in Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, Before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you to be holy and blameless. He says, Before the foundation of the world, this mystery was been given to talk among them that are mature and perfect. Tell Elias. And what a great principle we have in Christ to declare to us everything in lucid terms, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So he says, Dear brethren, you shall be free from such loathsome or you shall be free from lodging into such adultery teachings which is not right so before there was a strange god among you i was being declared nagad i have kept this yasha to save and keep it for you and i have showed it for you shamma and showing right now even john 17 26 he says i have declared and i'm declaring it unto till the end of the world what a privilege it is for us what is that end of the world the rapture of the church therefore in john 17 26 he says i have declared which is nothing but no rezo to become to be known unto them thy name and will declare it. That's what no rezo, which is nothing but shama. And that's what he has given for us. He showed for us. He first showed through the inspiration of the scriptures and then through the work of that through this man who have this bona fide gift. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, because of the grace of the Lord of our God, for which cause he has chosen me to be the minister of this word, the same thing what in fact indeed Isaiah realizes. Until unless he has been faithfully prepared, he cannot be sent. Likewise, the ministry, the ministry work as well for us in the church age. Study to show thyself upward unto God, a faithful preparation from its isagogical background, categorical background of the exegetical ones, and the great dispensing technique of dispensations with proper exegiomai. That is what we are here to know rezo. And he says, and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. The love is what? To make every believer like Christ. Therefore he has called many sons unto his glory. Therefore, dear brethren, I have declared Naga through the prophets and the apostles. And I have Yasha saved them and kept. And I am showing it to you, which is nothing but Shamma, so that you can hear and obey and listen and hear at the same time to be the sound Bible doctrine being declared to you, not to be like the itching ears, what he mentions in 2 Timothy 4, but to be enduring sound biblical Bible doctrine. That's the key and that's the principle for us in this great dispensation of the church age. Morons may write. The word says in Psalms 27, 6, because of this, our Lord of our God says, my head is lifted above. What a privilege it is to learn about those things. Above my enemies round about, therefore I will offer this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord of our God. The halal shining thoughts of apocrite, what we read, the things pertaining to Lord's temptation in Matthew 4, 4 through 10, and fime, which is to aware and to make them to conclude and shine. That's what it is, halal. And then he says, I shall do that because my service is to the Lord of a divine one, Lotharisus and my proskune to bow down and to worship only the Lord our God. What a privilege it is for us. Because of the word of the Lord our God, we are far superior than the world could ever seek and search or think of it or even imagine of it. Because it is the Lord our God who has declared to, to us through the prophets and the apostles, Ephesians 2, 20 and 22. 
And that's what he mentions in the mystery epistle of Ephesians 4 8. To some he gave the gift of prophets, the gift of apostles, and some evangelists and some pastor teachers. That's the right translation. And from there he has saved it for us. Yasha, because he is the only savior. Because neither the hell, neither the things pertaining to devil can destroy that because it is the content of the mind of Christ. To make us to be like Christ, being formed in the image of the Lord of our God. In our consciousness, in our mentality, in our emotion, in our, in our norms and standards, in our thinking. That's what we have been, the five facets of the soul. The mentality, the evolution, the emotion, the norms and standards and above all the consciousness. That's what Nithyanand talks about, consciousness. Made in the image of the Lord of our God to walk like Christ. Only through his word. Therefore, he saved us and gave us to confirm to the image of his dear beloved son, says Romans 8.28. And that's what Apostle Paul says, to confirm Christ's image in you. And he says, after the image of God, he has put upon you in Ephesians 4.24. Therefore, learn Christ. What a great verse it is when we read in the terms pertaining to Ephesians 4.23. Because verse number 23 will give a great inspiration for us to read and understand what is the principle for verse number 24. So dear brethren, he says in verse number 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What a privilege it is. Be renewed. The word ananuste to be once again renewed in the new matter of your news. Because by putting on the new man you have been called to do the great service to the Lord of our God. So dear brethren, first way believers should construct our life. The pastor teacher should train you up. And if we don't train up, the believers will fail and they will become an easy prey, more than one billion for unbelievers. The failure of your innovation, the spirit of your mind, you love to believe the lie. And the greater you believe the lies, the greater your life could be ended up. And dear brother, and I haven't kept any copyright for my tapes. You can download even offline and you can look upon that. And if there's anyone in the entire world who could translate this into their teachings and they want to teach in their own languages, which could strengthen my brethren in Christ, I would be the first person to give it sacrificially in love to them. Because we are here as long as it has been called today to encourage one another to the work of my Christ. So, dear brethren, you are my witnesses, said the Lord. He declared, Nagad, he Asha saved, and he's going to show us to listen and to obey Shama through the bona fide work of the pastor teachers. Renewing the spirit of your mind, putting on the new man. Let's walk. Confirming to the image of his dear beloved son, Summorphe, when the Morphote process, where Apostle Paul says, in Galatians 4.19, till Christ could be formed in you, the birth pangs of a pastor teacher. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we have to come and continue tomorrow, Jeremiah 33. We shall continue that. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order, we are telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn Takwai to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest merit is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the Diamantrum of Witnesses wherewith they have been called. The number one Diamantrum of Witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Diamantrum of Witnesses are our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature. The entire angelic host will be our witnesses, but what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Not to worry about the softies like the way how the unbelievers worry for their life on this earth. We walk by faith. We cling by faith. We lean on Christ by his word. That's what we take back the way how the principle found for us in Matthew 4, 4 through 10, when Satan tempted my Christ, you shall not tempt the Lord of a God, but you entirely depend upon him. Our daily work let's do first by seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, by becoming his disciple. 
walking in the straight gate. Then all the details of this life which our you when can't imagine or think. What the world can never play in its pleasure, he pays you through his word, which will be always righteous and happiness for us all the days of our life. So honoring his word above his name on this earth is our ultimate principle on this earth. Let's enjoy this great calling in Christ and be the witnesses for which cause he has made us. Let them hear and say what is the truth. In answering back the Pontus Pilate word when he says in Isaiah 43.10 when they have been justified in Isaiah 43.9 when they could be justified let them hear or let them hear and say it is the truth. What a great principle it is for us. Christ our Lord our God kept quiet to answer through us when we become under the terms of equal privilege and equal opportunity conforming to the image of his dear beloved son to the praise of his glory and his grace to walk truth to live truth and if ever we conceive our thought in our mind only on the word of the Lord our God which is the only truth which has been reserved and kept in a ready past now being declared for us the things needed on this earth Deuteronomy 29 29 and the things what we need in the heaven they have been there and the things which have been there in the heaven the remata declaration not to be told says second Corinthians let's wake up to do his will only his will dear brother and think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the great diamantrum of witnesses for which you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry besides nature. The entire angelic host will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have to fellowship with you through the word. Father, we have said, let the people hear and say what is truth. Help us, O Lord, to do it faithfully in all the days of our life. By becoming your ideal pastor teacher in the didactic ministry where which you have called, by expounding to these people the richness of their word. And Father, such as diligently and see if there is an offense away in us, even the minute thought of our mind. See if there is an offense away in us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. O Lord, God, the whole Spirit challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, sovereign Lord.